everybody, welcome back to the Clinical Trials Guru.com. Again, it's the Clinical Trials Guru.com. I'm joined by Adrian Flores. How's it going? He's been on a few videos, right? Yeah, a couple videos. So, Adrian is a study coordinator at one of my clinics. Before that, he was a study coordinator at how many other clinics? I know at least two. Uh, about like five or six. Clinics. Really? Yeah, really. You've been on that many? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. High turnover industry, everybody. Very. I didn't realize that. I thought it was like three. No, it was about four or five. Okay, so six. good, good. This is actually better. So you have you have numerous experience with a bunch of different clinics. Yeah. What phases did you guys do all? Well, I did a couple of phase one clinics, and then I went to uh, phase two to four for the rest of them. Okay. Yeah. And did you ever get into the budgets or the business of those clinics? Mm, and as a coordinator, you usually not don't. Really, but so they try to keep budgets and all that stuff away from you. Yeah. Okay. Did you get an idea of how much a phase one trial would pay? Yeah. The site. Yeah, I did. Okay. So the other day, Adrian asked me a question. I encourage all of you guys, by the way, to ask me questions. Dan at theclinicaltrialsguru.com. You can call or text me also. Nine four nine four one five six two five six. Or, if you happen to be an employee at one of my clinics, you can do what Adrian did. Write me a little post-it note, hand it to me right there, right by your wishing well. Yeah. Right? Uh, and my wishes come true. That's right. So your wish of owning a or opening a phase one clinic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, first of all, why do you have that desire? Like, what, what is it that makes you want to open a phase one clinic? Well, just coming into research, I wasn't really sure what it was about, uh, what it what research was, and uh, I kind of got the hang of it, got used to it, uh, and then I started to like it, and then uh, just it wasn't hard for me. It was pretty easy, and just kept going with it. Went a different couple sides, you know, and uh, really got into it, and then it just kind of stuck with me. So I kept doing it, and just thought maybe why shouldn't I own my own? See, a, a lot of coordinators have that. You're not the only one. I get mm -hmm. questions all the time from coordinators who want to start their own. Some have. Some have consulted with me. Some have partnered with me. Some have been successful and some haven't. Some have failed. Um, so you're, you're not alone, right? Mm -hmm. This is like a lot of people have this ambition. So why did you choose phase one? Well, uh, I've been to, through phase two to four. And phase one is just where all the money's at. That's right. Okay. Good. So yeah, why not? You're honest. Start it. Start with You're phase honest, one. Man. Good start stuff. with phase one, man. Phase one is where the money's at, and it's all. They're also the hardest studies to get. Yeah. So they are the hardest studies, especially for a brand new site, to obtain. So I, a lot of my clients that have been doing phase two through four studies for a decade or more mm -hmm. are just now trying to get into phase one okay and all you really need is like your first study but so you you want to get into that right away phase one yeah out the gate yeah and that's a good strategy to have but you need to be open to having phase two through four studies too. yeah of course of course because if you don't get a phase one study but you get a bunch of phase two through four you can do those yeah. and you could finance save up for the equipment and all the stuff that you need. And then start a phase one. Phase one phase clinic. One and you have experience doing phase one stuff. Yeah, I have a lot of experience. <clears throat> okay, so what you need for a phase one clinic, it's nothing fancy. I mean, you, you obviously need some bed space because phase one studies have overnight stay. So at the other clinic you worked at, how many beds did they have? We had about 64 beds. 64? Yeah. And oh, it was all in one unit? It was all upstairs, top floor. Six so your years. company owned, your former company owned the entire building, mm -hmm. and then one of the floors yeah. was dedicated to the 64 beds. Yeah, there was uh, bunks, there was uh, multiple rooms, and um, there was a couple big rooms that had beds, and then... Uh, Were they ever all full at one time? Yeah, there was, actually. Really? Yeah, we had one, and it was all meals, just there for, I believe, 32 nights. Okay, now that's you bring up a good point. Do you uh, did you ever separate male and females, or were they always mm -hmm. was it co-ed the floor? Well, I mean the floor's co-ed, but we would put uh, males to one side, females to the other side, and then there was different restrooms for males and females. Showers, and showers, and yeah, males and females. And did you have staff there making sure that the patients are not? Yeah, we had staff twenty four hours there, and um, 
we had a couple nurses and then um, a couple of overnight staff, just PO, patient observers, and they would feed them, take care of the patients if they need anything. They were there to supervise. Yeah. The last thing you need, and I've heard from tons of sponsors when we were looking at doing phase one studies, is for one of your phase one participants to get pregnant. Right? Oh, wow. Has that happened? <laughs> no, that hasn't happened. <laughs> <laughs> that Hopefully it, it does. <laughs> that is a serious concern of the Yeah, it is. It's very When you have co-ed floors, too. Yeah, it is. Like, that's actually something they ask you at the site selection visit. How mm -hmm. are you going to prevent that from happening? Yeah. What about, like, dietary needs? Like, do they have special menus? Um... Well, there's a did couple you guys have of, a cook? Uh, no, we didn't have a cook, but um, we do have a, we did have a dietitian right there on site, but uh, she would just provide just menus and just meals with certain calorie counts if if needed if there was dietary restrictions. And then you'd outsource and, that to some delivery company. Yeah, or we can just get it from uh, we were part with the hospital. Oh, so then okay. we could get okay. it from the hospital as well. Get the hospital food. Though. Yeah, just tell them we need this many calories, this, and they'll provide it for us. Or if it's like healthy patient studies, we can just get just any local food place, mm -hmm. McDonald's, Carl's Jr. Now, mm -hmm. as, a, as a coordinator, did you work the night shift? Uh, no, I never worked the night shift. But um, you had just, people doing that? Yeah, I had uh, other like assistants and stuff stay and work night shift. We'll just change their shifts around, put them later on in the day, okay. mid shift and then night shift. And how many how many phase one studies on average did you guys have at any given time? I would say about four or five at a time, uh -huh. and um, and that's not that's not counting all the multiple phase two to four studies that we had. They would also have the outpatient. Yeah, study. they would have the outpatient studies going in. And on up. like a typical phase one study, how many bed days is required per patient? I know they vary, but what? Yeah, it varies, but it can range from. It could be a two-night stay to, a, like you said, 32 nights, you know, mm -hmm. depending on... I've had one for study. 45 days. Really? Yeah, it's a very long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, only two patients completed the whole 45 days. Wow. It was for schizophrenia before you came at that clinic. Yeah. Yeah. Good, Adrian. Yeah. Well, oh, and the most important part of all this, you approached me with a question, yes. right? And uh, I think a lot of the site owners out there because we talk to the coordinators, a lot of the site owners run their businesses and they're fearful of exactly something like this, like a coordinator coming in, learning everything, and then going to start something else. Yeah. Right? I am completely opposite. When you come in, I actually try to find out, I try to get inside your head, mm -hmm. find out what it is you're trying to do, and then reverse engineer to create that, even if it means opening another clinic. Yeah. Right? And we're going to be end up becoming partners on this phase one site. We've got a few more people we need to bring in, but we're already starting the preliminary talks. So good stuff, Adrian. And good the stuff. message to the coordinators is, yes, you can do it. You can go from study coordinator to being an owner. And for the research clinic owners out there, look, if you try to keep everything at your site a secret, um, your coordinators, if they really want to go open a clinic, they're going to do that anyways. You might as well have them approach you and maybe want to partner with you. At least you can get something out of it. Right? Yeah. Right? Correct. All right, man. Dan and Adrian from TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Take care.